let's consider one more zinger on this topic. You are now in charge of both WADA and USADA. Okay. Right. So world anti-doping and U.S. anti-doping agencies. Ah, thank you for agencies. defining those for me. You have an obvious and clear hard line against drugs that improve performance. So a, an athlete cannot take testosterone or growth hormone or EPO or anything that boosts performance. Now, if you think about it, a lot of sports have their performance improved when the athlete is lighter. Weight management is a big part of many sports. Cyclists, runners, gymnasts, if you think about it, rowers, rowers, any sport that is cardiac output versus body weight, those athletes, and I used to be one of them, you are relent you are just as focused on weight management as you are cardiac output. Should these drugs be banned by WADA and USADA? Are they indeed performance enhancing drugs? Great question. I hadn't thought about that until you asked it. Great question. Because it introduces a whole different set of interests. Prior, we were talking mainly about the individual person's taking the drugs interest and a little bit about the provider's interest, you, a little bit about society, cost, FDA, so on. Here you've introduced a fourth party and that party is the sport. Um, all the spectators, the people who own it, the other participants, the sport has rules. And sport is very different than some other things where there's an arbitrariness to it, right? Why does the baseball bat have to be this long and not that long? Why does the tennis racket have to be within these dimensions? Well, that part's arbitrary, but what's not arbitrary is we want it to be equal. We want everybody to have the same chance. So in other words, right. we don't spend too much time worrying about the length or weight of the baseball bat. We worry far more that you didn't screw into yours and put cork in there and change the weight of it. That's the thing we care about is fairness. Because that's the rule, but the rule, we even change the rules about the intrinsic things. So we change the rules about, in some places, we don't condition on age. In others, we have age brackets. Some boxing, we have weight brackets. Wrestling, we have weight brackets. We don't have height brackets in basketball. And it's interesting, some colleagues and I are trying to write a whole paper on you know, mathematically, what is bias? What do we mean by that? And we use basketball as an analogy. And I use myself as the example and say, if I try out and, and I don't do well for the basketball team because I'm short, I don't call that bias because intrinsic to the idea of basketball is these are the rules. We don't have springboards for shorter guys. Um, we could, but we don't. We don't have height classes. And so that's not biased. In contrast, if you ask me to try out to be a biostatistics professor and the book is on the top shelf that you want me to lecture from and there's no step stool, I would argue that's biased because you could have put a step stool there and it's not intrinsic to biostatistics professor performance to be able to reach tall things. And so we need to look at the sport and say, what do you want it to be? And if somebody says, I want it to be things where part of the sport is being able to maintain your weight. And so I don't want anybody to have a performance enhancing drug, then to me, so be it. I could also alternatively turn around and say, um, we just want you to be able to get the basket in the, in the hoop, or we just want you to be able to row the boat. And, you know, if you do it by having more money and hiring a better coach and you do it by taking Ozempic and you do it by um, having good genes, all is fair. And I, I don't think there's a right answer there from the sport point of view. I think you, you just decide what it is. But given that the sport has already made several decisions, right? They've already said you can't take a drug that increases the number of red blood cells that you have. Mm -hmm. That's EPO. You can't take a drug that increases the rate at which your muscles repair themselves after hard training. That would be testosterone, right? You can't, you know, and go on and on and on. You can't take a drug like a diuretic that takes body weight away from you. Um, I just wonder where, this is a, this is not a philosophical question about drugs. It's a quest, it's a practical question yeah. about this class of drugs whose efficacy is, as you said, profound and its safety, at least in the short term, unquestionable. 
um, you know, are we going to basically see at the Olympics this year in France, if they were drug testing for it, what fraction of athletes would be taking GLP-1 agonists of the sports where body weight uh, regulation is a key. I don't expect many shot putters to be taking no. it, but I do wonder how many boxers and rowers and runners and cyclists will be taking it. Really interesting. We should do that study. Let's work on it. <laughs> um, but uh, so I don't know the answer. Haven't heard about that before. I think your speculation is is apt. I think that as a formalist, I would go and say, well, what is these groups that have said you can't take testosterone and this and this and that? What's the, they probably put out some underlying principles that probably said you cannot take a drug that enhances performance unless you have a medical need. I, I don't know if they've said that, but if they have, then then it could get really tricky <laughs> because now you say, well, who defines the medical need? That's right. What about, you know, now is it fair if we take the person who's just below the threshold for needing it, who says, I don't get to take the drug. But the person who's just above the threshold who does, you have then also this idea of a fairness, a disabilities issue. If I if I have obesity and I particularly I've got a strong genetic predisposition to it, and um, I can't manage to be not obese without the drug, do I effectively have a disability? And is this now prejudicial or violation of you know, the Americans with Disabilities Act or something like that, or, you know, different countries have different variants, but is there, is there a fairness issue? And again, I, I don't know that there's a right answer. I think these, these would be tough political and moral questions, but it's really particularly tough because you bring in the interest of the sport. And then you're going to get also, it's going to reflect back when you get into the health interests of the individual, just as with many sports, we might say it's in the interest of the team or the coach or the sport itself to have this person at greater risk. But of course, it's not in the interest of their situation. And yet we somehow accept that we allow people to play football, even though there's concussion risk and we allow people to box and many other things. Um, but are there some limits where we might say, we're not comfortable with your putting yourself at risk um, for this. We need to protect you as much as the sport. 